Hey, welcome back to Manga Mondays, the only manga review show with a constant threat of helicopter noise that's filmed all in the same day and released over weeks at a time. Today I'm going to be talking about the first volume of Wandering Island. This one is a manga by Kenji Suruta, who I think this is his first manga to be published in the U.S., but he's been around for a, a million years and made a million things. I knew him best for a short manga called Memories of Eminon, I think that's the, the title, which I know was uh, sort of popular on A and, and around the internet for a little while. Um, but this is like an ongoing series that he's been doing. As I understand it, it updates very slowly, even in Japan. But um, I picked it up... For a very, a very clear reason that you will all understand immediately, which is that it's got really pretty art and the main character girl is always in a bikini uh, and she's cool as shit. She's this like 20 something girl who her grandfather dies at the start of the manga and he was running a, uh, a air air transport business he he flies packages to all these little islands in japan because japan is a gigantic archipelago a lot of people forget that you know there's a million little islands in japan and a lot of those they don't even have like any like boats that go to them or planes or anything like you know like they'll get a if they need mail then they've got like one girl on a biplane, you know, flying mail out to these islands and shit. And that's what her, her grandpa was running that business. She was kind of working for him and he dies. So she takes over. Now he leaves behind a package addressed to an island called Electric Island that nobody thinks exists. Here's her wearing shades and looking like a badass. This is, this is the main reason I bought this manga. But basically... Um, she becomes obsessed with trying to find this mysterious island that supposedly is just drifting around the, uh, the Pacific Ocean. And, like, there's all these old tales of people who have seen it, but all of them are, of course, full of shit. But she actually does see it, and she becomes obsessed with trying to find it again. So, uh, pretty much the entire volume is, like, a lot of build-up to her getting to the island, and then the entire rest of it is her obsessing over how to get back to the island. And it gets to the point where she's, like, this takes place over quite some period of time, um, and it's just her losing her fucking mind and growing more and more tired-looking and dead as she tries to find this island for, like, months. You know, her power gets cut off at some point. She's, like... You know, everyone's worried about her. They're like, what the hell, girl? What are you fucking doing? She s sits around at home with no shirt on and fucking uses computers. I mean, basically, the, the, the look, there's one reason to read this manga. This main character girl is cool, you know? I think I was flipping through it in the store, and I saw this page where she's, like, hanging out naked and playing with a toy gun. And I was like, I love her. I want to read about her. I want to know her story. Um... Look at this shit. Look at, look at her. Fucking coolest chick in the world. She's cooler than anyone else in the universe. I want to know everything about her. Unfortunately, there's not that much to know about her. She has, like, uh, a teacher who she was in love with who had also disappeared before her grandpa. It seems apparent that both of them were researching the same thing. The island, they both ended up going there. She's trying to, like, this, this thing is very dry and slow there's not much that happens it's like pages upon pages of like no text of just her you know kind of wandering around getting into airplane shit and and occasionally talking to people and being shirtless like it's mostly just kind of a psychological exploration of this character losing her mind trying to find this island with really gorgeous art i don't even know what else to tell you that's basically it. I've said it all. Now, do I recommend this? The thing about it is, this was a $15 manga. And had I read it beforehand, I would not have paid $15 for it just because literally nothing happens other than what I've described. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's just kind of pleasant to take in like the images are cool and and i love like like these facial expressions and stuff and just i can't really get it in focus good but 
if you enjoy just looking at this girl, if her personality is something that resonates with you as it does with me, then you might get enough out of this to make it worth reading. I don't know if I'd recommend buying it. I don't know how long it's going to take for Volume 2. I don't know if anything's going to happen in Volume 2. Um, but it's, it's cool to have. It's cool to remember that there was a cute girl existed, you know? That's it for this episode of Digi's Manga. I didn't have enough to say. That's all there is. That's Manga Monday. Sorry if it was a little short.